and I've yet to see what the platoon commander's going to say. But I'd be happy to carry the soldier to the end just to keep the morale section going. I believe if I lose Private Dodd, then that is a section totally deflated. I might even go myself. In fact, I might just, we might just all clear off if Dodd goes. I could catch up on that, Joe. I've watched it. I've watched it. I know what you, you guys are doing. I've watched it and I could do it. I don't care about my feet. I just want to finish. Does it hurt when you walk still? Yeah, of course it hurts when I walk. Nothing's going to change that, but in a couple of weeks I'll be fine. I can't see that let it go a week before it's all finished. It just doesn't make sense. If you don't want to go and you insist that you can still take part and help out as a team player, I can't believe they'll just say it's tough, you got to go. Well, if I just came properly prepared, this would never happen. Just didn't think it would be this hard. Back at the billet, the news has spread about Dodd's visit to the medic. Honzik decides to take action. I'm going to go and speak to the OC. And then just tell them how important that Jamie is to our platoon because there's not one person in this room now that our section can do without. They must, they must take it into account because, it, all right, if no one went forward and said, oh, well, why is Jamie going home? He's important. Then I guess they'd think, oh, well, he's told everyone he's going home. They're not bothered. But we are bothered. That's why I'm going to go and see what the score is. I'm hunting! Come here! Sergeant Sullivan has got wind of Honzik's plan. He's not impressed. So you want to see the platoon commander? Yes, sir. You are so important, are you, no, that sergeant. you can get to see the platoon commander? No, sir. Yeah? A low-life recruit who has no existence beyond training wants to see the platoon commander. Does he? Yes, sergeant. He doesn't think that his section corporals or his platoon sergeant can sort it out. Is that correct? I do, sergeant. You think that we can't sort it. Is that so? No, sergeant. Right. So why do you want to see the platoon commander then? Are we not sufficient for you, Honzig? No, sergeant. What do you think you're going to achieve by seeing the platoon commander, Honzig? You're going to change army policy, are you, Honzig? No, sergeant. I understand this is not a democracy, but I'd like to make known our section's thoughts. Do you? So yes, what sir. makes you the solid spokesman in your section, Honzig? What makes you better than anybody else in your section? Nothing, Sergeant, but they've put me forward, Sergeant. Right, listen in. When I tell you, get to the bottom of the stairs and wait. Yes, Sergeant. Now! Michael has matured immensely in the last three weeks. He's not the same person who got off that bus. He was stood in just outside, laughing his head off, couldn't stop giggling, thrown into his locker every two seconds. In three weeks, he's become a, a very strong young man, and he is a leader, and he can only go from strength to strength from this. You want to speak to me? We wanted to make it clear that we wanted to uh, private dad to stay. And well, it's not up to you to decide, and it's not up to you to tell anyone that you want private dad to stay. Is that firstly, is that understood? Yes, sir. OK, go on. We'd like him to stay because he is a large member of our team. He's good for morale. You saw yourself how good he was in the naffy of the other night. He wrote all the songs. However, what you should be aware of is that this is not a social club. Yes, sir. This is not, you know, this depot is not designed to have people who are good for morale. Yes, it's sir. not designed to have people who are good in the naffy. We're, we're training here to produce professional fighting soldiers. So what's going to happen in battle? So if Dodd goes down and gets shot, is the whole section going to stop doing the attack, is it? And yes, rally sir. around Dodd? It is. Because we're a team, sir, and we don't need a man. Well, that's not sir. acceptable. Yes, sir. You're here to learn how to be professional soldiers, not how to be mates. The end goal is to destroy the enemy rather than being destroyed yourself. Is that understood? Understood, sir. Right, Hansik. Um, I'm giving this some thought anyway. Regardless, however, let the section know that we will not be swayed one way or the other, and the decision rests with myself yes, sir. and not with the section. We fully understand that, sir. OK. <laughs> Still to come on, lads, army. The lads swing into action. And Private Honzik gets creative. It's lads, army! It's been a long, hard slog, but National Service basic training is slowly transforming a group of young lads into budding soldiers. With only a week to go until the awards for champion and most improved recruits, Captain Owen has called a meeting to run through his options. In line for best recruit is David Gardner. 
I don't think that the sergeant major would have any particular reason to pick on me now, except for possibly the fact I'm about three feet shorter than everyone else. He's always smiling, he's yeah. always enthusiastic. Um, yeah. you know, I think he raises the tone, certainly, yeah. for the rest okay, of the course. I see he's definitely in front. Also in with a chance, Tony Ellis. I know that, you know, things, when things are tough, if you just keep going, that you can work yourself out pretty much anything. When he started that cross-country race, unbeknownst to me, he had a rib injury. And he yeah. completed that, and he was breathing at his ass. He was saying it difficult to breathe, and he had that injury. To that me, that is guts. Student James Willingham is in the running for most improved recruit. There'd be two words that I'd use to sum myself up, and they'd be bone idle. He's going to come back a new man. No, I don't think it will change me. He's a different person to the man I like. Attitude? OK. And after his recent performance, Corporal Nyokis sticks his neck out and proposes laughing boy, Michael Honzik. I describe myself as cheeky, loud, confident, mischievous, intelligent, likeable, humorous, and most of all, fun. Honzik's 18 years old and in the past three weeks has matured yeah. immensely. The section themselves have, are basically looking to him for leadership. And he's the youngest boy in that room, and on the first day, they, they wouldn't have gone near him. And now, they're looking to him for leadership. 18 years old, I, I think he's got something. Out of the running altogether is Jamie Dodd. Dodd. Uh, he's going to be ungraded on everything, with the exception of attitude for which he scores a town. His turnout was absolutely abysmal this morning. He looked like he'd slept in his kit for three days. And to me, that's part of attitude. Um, I understand he's, you know, he's a bit down at the moment because he can't join in with everything else, but there's no excuse for just... I mean, I even asked him, I said, when did you last press your kit? And he said, two days ago. As Dodd's future hangs in the balance, his teammates in one section are psyching themselves up for the next major team event, a gruelling assault course. This sort of course is really important today, we've got to win it. As long as we give it our all, 120 million percent, then I'll be happy. I think slowly but surely we're coming back now, and I think today is really promising with the assault course. I think they could really bring it back for us. We're definitely important, we need to win today. Like, we have to win, basically. But there's now a question mark over the fitness of their key recruit. Michael Honzik's got a swollen ankle but he's determined to be there for his team. Who are the sickies? Put your hands up. One, two, three. You're a sickie as well, aren't you? No, Sergeant. Yes, you bloody well are. No, Sergeant. Shut up. You will be there. You had swollen feet. You didn't want to, don't you dare answer me back. The Shut the up. Sergeant. You will pray with the sickies. Right, when I say go, start to get yourself organised. Go! I, I don't want to know. Go. I've told you when to pray. Go away. Go away! Go away! Honzik's back chat is a mistake. If there's one thing the army demands more than enthusiasm, it's obedience. Who the f do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Who the f sergeant talks to you and tells you what you're doing? That's what you're doing, do you understand? Yes, Corporal! You will do your f told. I don't give a f I'm in one section or two sections. If anybody tells you to do something, you don't chat back, you understand? Yes, Corporal! Then get in the f shell and get on the square. Move! Move before I punch your face out! Crawl. Have you ever <laughs> talk back again, do you understand? Yes, Corporal! If you still get ready, people, trust me, I don't give a Crawling over a parade square with a 62-pound shell is never fun. But Private Honzik is about to pay the ultimate price for his cheek. You are staying behind whether you like it or not, and you will do as you're told. Do you understand? Yes, GoPro! As the rest of the lads leave for the assault course, Honzik remains behind with the rest of the injured to receive a further punishment. Right, Honzik, stand attention. I'm not going to waste my breath on you anymore. I'm fed up and so is Sergeant Sullivan of you not doing what we tell you. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Sergeant! I'm not wasting my time anymore on you because you are a bag of shit as far as I'm concerned and should not be here. Look what I've got here. <laughs> a bucket of coal. Every piece I want lined up along here 
and I want painted white. And when I get back tonight, if there's one piece that's not painted white, or I don't think it's white enough, I will get the whole platoon on your behalf painting that whole coal bunker. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. So if you don't do this, the whole platoon will be punished because of you. Yes, sir. Because I'm fed up with you. Do I make myself yes, clear? Yes, sir. Right. Get to work. 